Good morning and welcome to CBS News Mornings. It is just shy of 7 o'clock here on the East Coast. I'm Lana Zak. In for Anne Marie Green, here's a look at the stories grabbing our attention right now. The push for diplomacy intensifies along Ukraine's border. Holly Williams is there covering the latest in a series of high profile cyber attacks amid growing questions over Russia's commitment to a peaceful resolution. The company whose rifle was used in one of the country's deadliest school shootings will now pay a $73 million settlement to some of the families of Sandy Hook victims. We'll share those families' hopes for preventing similar tragedies. Plus, no admission of guilt and no apology, but the royal family is expected to make a princely payout after settling a major case surrounding Jeffrey Epstein's alleged sex trafficking ring. We've got reaction from across the pond. And then we will hear directly from one of the country's leading cybersecurity firms sharing disturbing new data about ransomware attacks nationally and abroad. And we'll tell you how one very special orchestra is inspiring crowds beyond the music. What have you found with the orchestra? Playing music is so powerful when you are all joined by a common mission. We aren't trying to be the greatest orchestra in the world. We are just trying to create a community. How the Me Too Orchestra for People with Mental Illness is ending stigma and orchestrating inclusion. But we begin this morning with Ukraine, where Russia says it is pulling back some troops from the country's border and welcomes more talks with the West, a signal that conflict may be avoided in the region. But the U.S. and its allies say they need evidence of a troop withdrawal and that the threat of an invasion still looms. Laura Podesta is following this story for us. Laura, good morning. Good morning, Lana. And yes, this morning, Russia's foreign minister released video of tanks and other military vehicles leaving Crimea across a railway bridge. What they say is visual proof of a withdrawal. But the U.S. has not yet verified that video or those claims. The U Coming up, a little girl who disappeared in 2019 has finally been found alive. Coming up after the break, we'll tell you how police spotted a secret space under a staircase and found the girl and why her biological parents are at the center of the investigation. Plus, we've got our hands on a new report that's revealing an alarming spike in global cybersecurity threats. CrowdStrike's head of intelligence is here to talk us through what his company found and what it means for you. But first, it is 7:10 on the East Coast, and time to check your local weather. The time is now 12.14 p.m. in London. Ooh, look at that beautiful skyline, so blue today. It is also 7.14 here in New York City. CBS News Mornings is back with a look at some of the stories you may have missed while you were offline. The former leader of Honduras has surrendered to authorities following an extradition request by the U.S. Juan Orlando Hernandez, who left office last month after eight years as president, is facing drug trafficking charges. He's previously denied any wrongdoing. Researchers believe a U.S. patient is the first woman to ever be cured of HIV. She also suffered from leukemia, and as part of her cancer treatment, she received an umbilical cord blood transplant from a donor with a rare HIV-resistant mutation. And best-selling writer and satirist P.J. O'Rourke has died from lung cancer complications. He held several roles over the course of his career, including editor-in-chief of National Lampoon. He also briefly served as a 60 Minutes commentator. P.J. O'Rourke was 74. This is a crazy story. A young girl who went missing more than two years ago has been found alive. Police discovered six-year-old Paisley Schultes on Monday while searching a New York home. 
Nick Calloway from CBS News New York has the details. Coming up, the fight over school mask mandates <clears throat> excuse me, has escalated to new levels, especially in New Jersey, where the largest school district is clashing with the state. We'll have the latest after the break. And coming up later on Red and Blue, early voting is already underway in the nation's first primary of 2022. We'll take a closer look at the Texas elections and what it could tell us about the country's political landscape heading into November. You can stream that conversation in our 6 p.m. Eastern hour. Now to disturbing new data from CrowdStrike, one of the leading cybersecurity firms. Its eighth annual global threat report detected a whopping 82% spike worldwide in ransomware-linked data breaches. The report introduces potential new hacking groups and explains how attacks are getting increasingly sophisticated. Coming up, President Biden weighs new measures to help alleviate pain at the gas pump. I will not pretend this will be painless. There could be impact on our energy prices. So we are taking active steps to alleviate the pressure on our own energy markets. And offset rate markets. We are following the latest details about a possible gas tax holiday coming up next. Welcome back to CBS News Mornings. The time is now 736. Let's get you caught up on some of the news you may have missed. The Remington Gun Manufacturing Company will pay an estimated $73 million settlement to the families of nine Sandy Hook massacre victims. Remington went bankrupt in 2020 and has denied all allegations. The January 6th committee investigating the Capitol riot has subpoenaed phone records from Alex Jones's security guard. It's likely that the panel will look into who the InfoWars founder was in contact with before the riot took place. Jones has previously pleaded the fifth. And Russia claims it's pulling back some troops from Ukraine's border, but the U.S. and its allies say that they need more evidence of Russia's intentions. Holly Williams is in Kyiv, where Ukrainians remain anxious about what may lie ahead. Since we'll have all of that and more. We'll see you at 8. You know you will see me. See you at 8. In a stunning move, Prince Andrew has agreed to settle a sexual abuse lawsuit stemming from Jeffrey Epstein's alleged sex trafficking ring. Coming up, MTS Tayyab brings us all the latest details. Until then, we're going to take a quick break, which means that you have now three minutes to download the free CBS News app on all of your devices. Our app gives you the best of CBS News all in one place. And while you're at it, you can check out Paramount+. Plus. We've got a mountain of content for you to stream there as well, including your favorite shows and movies and sports. And a little programming note for you, America's most popular true crime series is now available here to stream. You can watch 48 Hours tonight at 8 Eastern. We'll be right back. Britain's Prince Andrew has reached a settlement with a woman who says she was sexually trafficked to the British royal by Jeffrey Epstein when she was a teenager. MTS Tayeb has the latest. We've got a whole lot more to offer. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is in Brussels today holding high stakes meetings with NATO allies. They're addressing Russia's military buildup along the Ukrainian border. He's set to visit Poland tomorrow. And coming up in a few hours, Oath Keepers founder Stuart Rhodes will appear in court virtually. He's accused of stockpiling weapons for the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Plus, the Los Angeles Rams will take a victory lap this afternoon for their Super Bowl parade. This, of course, comes after they beat the Cincinnati Bengals 23 to 20 on Sunday. And before all of that, Florida Senator Rick Scott joins us in our 9 o'clock hour. We'll discuss all things midterms, plus the latest developments on Capitol Hill. You can stream that just after 9 a.m. Eastern. If you're heading out the door, we can come too. You can access all of our CBS News national and local streams for free anytime, anywhere on the CBS News app. CBS Mornings is next. I'm Lana Zak. I'll see you in an hour.